All right, we're here for part two of this week's Yawa. And I believe, just for fun, I think we should start part two the same as we started part one. Go! Hiya! That was drastically Way better. better. Way better. Yeah, so the second time's the charm, right? Which is exactly how it goes in Titanic, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> here, let's cut this into quarters so there's small pieces to eat. So delicious. Mm. 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 Should we cut it into eighteenths? Yeah, yeah. I don't think it would be eighteenths, but you know. Yeah. Eighths. Speaking Math. of, if you haven't already figured it out, uh, I believe Happy Thanksgiving last week to the Canadian friends. You got crumbs on my microphone. Goodness, can't take you. Blow it off. And it'll pick the crumbs into the top. Of it. There we go. Ha ha. Mm. Got it. <laughs> this is why you don't eat in Yawa. At the same time. Don't eat in Yawa. We need bumper stickers that say that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, these are delicious, and I can't stop eating them. So. Thank goodness they are made in Canada, and I can't get them down here on the regular. They essentially are like a miniature pecan pie. pie. And which is absolutely my favorite dessert ever. Pecan pie. Mm Mm-mm. Good. In the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So, ready for question one of this part? I can be. Okay. This question is from Andrew Cavada, which... um, I'm not making fun of your name, but it made me think of Abracadabra. I don't know why when I read your name, but that's what it made me think of. Huh. Andrew Cavada, Abracadabra. Yeah, it's You're not getting it. Okay. Well, that's exactly the first thing that popped into my mind when I read it. Yawa question. This is my first bird dog. Five month old GSP and pheasant season opens in two weeks here in Pennsylvania. Ooh, congratulations. On pheasant season and your puppy. Mm-hmm. I just have a few questions. Keep in mind that I have been training by myself and with the help of the Keystone Navda Club and have not had professional help. That's awesome that you joined a chapter and have reached out to them. We talk about this in a lot of our videos in Yawas about. Reaching out, networking, working with a training group. If you're an amateur, if you don't know what you're doing, it's your first bird dog. They are a great resource to help you learn some of the basics, get your puppy ready, whether it's for testing or hunting. So um, he points birds in training and has had a proper gun intro. What should I expect his first year in the field to look like? He will be six months when the season starts, which I know is usually when dogs get a little independent, and I'm already seeing signs of this. Is it okay for him to flashpoint? Will this cause him to learn to hold longer because they got away? Should I shoot birds he flushes instead of holding till I flush? Will he struggle to listen because he's so excited and distracted by the birds? Is it okay to put a bell on him to help keep track of him, or will this scare birds away? Important detail to this one is that unfortunately, all the pheasants in Pennsylvania are now farm-raised, not wild. Basically, what are the most likely things to happen in the first year for an amateur first-time pointer trainer with a puppy? I know this was long and feel free to summarize, but thanks for all the great content. There were a lot of pieces to this question, and I Mm -hmm. thought a lot of good information. The rest of those are mine, sir. I assumed. (laughs) He's just noshing away while I'm trying to read this question. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so there was a lot of important pieces to this question, and I think that they were a lot of good questions that probably not only um, Andrew has, but a lot of first-time bird dog owners, hunters, are going to have this year. So I would say the first year that I took my first bird dog out on her first ever hunt. Crazy Sam dog. She pointed butterflies. Cows. She pointed cows. She did end up pointing a pheasant. Which you shot for her. I did. Then I <clears throat> moved from that into coming back to the house to take pictures. The 
sought after photos of the dogs on point after the hunt, all the things. Cause you know, it's our first baby bird dog, first hunting season. Mm -hmm. And then I made her point the pheasants in the tall grass behind the house because I thought that the would dead be pheasants. Yeah, dead pheasants behind the, the house in the tall grass because I thought that this would be good additional exposure and maybe we'd have less butterflies and cows on our next adventure out. So if you're going, yeah, what's wrong with that? Don't feel like you're alone because this guy did that. Mm -hmm. And did. we want to say why that's not necessarily something that you would want your dog to do. First yeah, of all, they're dead. They're dead. We want right. those dogs to retrieve dead birds, not point them again. Mm -hmm. So expecting her to go out and point those dead pheasants in the tall grass was not the smartest idea that we had had, but it, Kind of made sense at the time to get the picture and the experience, but it was not exactly how it should be done. No. But, um, yes, so your dog has been pointing birds in training, has had a gunfire introduction, super important prerequisites to going hunting. We actually shot a video, it's been a while now, about the prerequisites and the things that you should have your bird dog be able to do, and then the things that would be really freaking nice for them to know prior to taking them out for their first hunt. What was the title of that producer? I believe it was called Things Your Dog Should Know Before Hunting and Other Things That Might Be Really, Really Frickin' Nice. Let me see. So we're going to look that up, but that would be a really good video to watch because um, something else on that list is I really would want my puppy to be collar conditioned for recall prior to going hunting, especially in un... Um, Areas that they're not used to, new environments that they're hunting in. There's a lot of activity, a lot of excitement, like you mentioned. They get on wild birds, they're shooting, there's things going on, the dogs are running, and they get lost. Or you need to be able to recall them from a potentially dangerous situation, running across a road or something. And having a solid recall, collar conditioned recall, would be one of the things that I would say would be really important to have prior to going. It's going to give you a little more control, a little more obedience and handle on the situation so that you definitely feel a little more comfortable taking your puppy out with you. The video is called, and you can search, Standing Stone, three, count them, one, two, three, musts for your dog to go hunting. And then in small text, it says, and some other things that are really freaking nice for them to have. So check that video out. It would be very beneficial for you prior to your first hunting season, especially because you still have a little bit of time to work on some things before the season kicks off. Um, but yes, expect for your puppy to get excited and for things to maybe not go as smoothly as they do in a very controlled training situation. Now, it doesn't sound like you have wild pheasants, but hopefully the farm-raised pheasants that you're going to be utilizing and hunting will be very wild-like. So that if your puppy goes in and points, but it's only a flash point, and then they try and take out that bird um, for themselves without you moving in to flush them, that they don't catch them. Catching them teaches them some naughty habits that, hey, I really don't actually need to hold this point because I can just catch a bird. Well, that's not going to really happen with wild birds typically. So if they try and flash point and push that bird out and it flushes, then yes, Exactly what you said. They're going to learn that, hey, if they don't point long enough, they're not going to get an opportunity on that bird. And you do have to have some restraint and not shoot those birds for them then. Because otherwise, we're just reinforcing a flash point is all you need to do to get a bird shot for you. Yes. And like we say in a lot of different episodes and training videos and all the things, what your dog is doing, they are conditioning themselves to. Now, there is a fine line here. Like Kat mentioned, handling that wild bird correctly, um, that wild bird's going to teach a lot to the dog, and that's the way we try and utilize and recreate with electronic launchers. So if you don't have wild bird access and you're trying to kind of prepare your dog without, electronic launchers are definitely the best way to go with this because they allow for good timing and preventing your dog from overpressuring and learning naughty habits. Now, to caveat all of that, if you use the electronic launchers improperly, you can create more problems than you had to begin with, or you can create a lot of problems. Let's go with that. Yes. Any training tool used improperly can cause more problems as well. So any training tool. Yes. So 
the last part of this question, um, I feel that it's the last other question that I didn't quite uh, get to was asking about utilizing a bell to help keep track of him Mm. or if that will scare birds away. Don't do it. Yeah, I was like, well, that's a terrible answer. We'll just let him go with it and then I'll correct him. So yeah, you can use a bell. We don't use bells, but we use beeper collars, uh, which allows us to be able to hear the dogs if they're on point or just locate them. We can push a button and it'll beep for us. Or it can go on um, a running and pointing mode where it beeps while they're running, but beeps faster when they're on point so that we can keep track audibly where the dogs are at if we can't see them in thick cover. And so, well, there's a lot of people that think that those beepers scare birds off, you know, but I could tell you right now that for every person that you find that says that the beeper scared birds off, I can recount a single bird that I've shot over a Dog on point with beepers going off or multiple dogs pointing and backing, dung, 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 going beep, 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 beep. And the birds aren't getting up until we flush. No, we walk in and kick them up. But these are wild birds, folks. Yeah. The other side of it is, you know, birds flushing wildly happens, whether you've got a beeper collar on the Mm -hmm. dog, whether you have a bell on the dog, whether Mm -hmm. the dog is overpressuring the birds or not, especially towards later season and wily smart birds start getting overpressured throughout the season and they say, Hey, we know somebody just got in the field and we are out because we don't want to be hunted anymore. I feel like pheasants or birds in general must just run hot, right? So any amount of warmth in the air and they're just like, Ugh, I don't want to be here, but they get out when it's cooler. I mean, and it's like, they're gone running on top of the snow and they're out there moving and grooving and it's like energizing them like the dogs do you know you dump the dogs out and it's like ooh, it's a cool morning here we go i think the birds are the same way so to answer your question the bell will not scare the birds off but it will help you potentially keep track of your puppy bells aren't super loud so the puppy's going to have to be fairly close and moving to be able to hear them yeah that's my thing so first of all uh, I think a bell's not a bad thing for a little ching ching ding ching ching ding ding ching ching when you are in the woods, you know, or in really thick cover where the dog's gonna be close to you, but you can't see them for the most part. That's not bad. But I will tell you, I've hunted with a few people with bells, and I don't really care to listen to them. Just like I don't really care to listen to beepers all day long. Hate it. It's noisy. Let's just be. That and peace with the outdoors, bro. But um, I, I like it to be quieter. And then when the noise starts, I can zero in on exactly where that dog is really fast. Now, with the bell, it's the exact opposite. You know, ching, 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 ching. It stopped. Oh, shit. Where did I hear that beeper last? <laughs> where did just, I hear the bell last? I just I think was, was kind of tuning it out after a while. Yeah, where I think, was it? I think, I think it was kind of that direction, maybe. And you just start wandering because the bell no longer makes noise where the beeper works in, in the opposite of that. And it's like a homing beacon to where the, the dog actually has stopped. So uh, to each their own in that, but neither, neither way, they're, they're not going to affect your birds. So. Unless maybe you're in an area where there's a bajillion guys with bells and and then now the birds are bell trained. I don't know. I wouldn't worry about it. No, I wouldn't worry about it either. If you like a bell, go for a bell, buddy. But those were really great questions. I think a lot of people have them coming up on their first season with their first bird dog. Um, but just ultimately go out, have fun. Expect your puppy to make some mistakes. They have a lot to learn still. And birds make a bird dog. So a hunting season, now that they've got the basics, is going to help them put all the pieces together and gain that experience that we're looking for. We'll see you in part three. <laughs>